We're going to be tackling some basic congruence problems based off information in the first congruence video. So this is the problem. 5x is congruent to 4 modulo 3. We want to find some x for which that works. So I started here just by listing multiples of 5 and in the other part of the column is the remainder when I divided by 3. Now notice none of these remainders are 4 like we want. So do we say this problem is impossible? No, it just means it's written in a very silly and uh, non-reduced form. So what this problem says, if I take 5x divided by 3, I should get remainder 4. But you see how this is weird, because if I, did so, if I divide something by 3, my only possible remainders are 0, 1, and 2. There's no 4. So to understand this, I drew 10 dots, and I grouped them into 3s. I grouped these 3, I grouped these 3, not the one at the end. Um, and then I just drew these 4 in separate boxes. So you could say I have remainder 4, because I grouped these and then I left these by themselves. So you could say I have remainder 4, but really, I can just take 3 of these and link them into their own group, and I really have re remainder 1. So to see this algebraically, let's just take the statement. So 5x minus 4 over 3 is some k, which is an element of integers. Okay, that's what that means. So I have 5x over 3 minus 4 over 3 equals 5x over 3 minus 1 minus 1 over 3. That equals some integer. So I have 5x minus 1 over 3 equals some integer plus 1 which is still an integer. So I've reduced this into a remainder 1 problem. So really, this is not 4 at all. This can just be a 1. And if that's a 1, then any of these cases work. Could be 10, could be 25, which means that x could be 2, could be 5, you know, so on. So that's how you solve those kind of problems where the remainder is bigger than our c value. And the second problem we're going to solve is this one. So it says, prove that if x is congruent to y modulo m and a0, a1, dot, 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 all the way to a sub r are all integers, then a0, x to the r plus a sub 1, x to the r minus 1 plus dot, 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 a to the r, um, not a to the r, a sub r, is congruent to a0, y to the r plus a1, y to the r minus 1 plus dot, 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 a to the r modulo m. So it's a long statement, um, and but it's very easy to solve. So let's just write it in the form that we always write it in. So that means that a0 x to the r plus a1 x, uh, x to the r minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a r minus a0 y to the r plus a1 y to the r minus 1 plus dot 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 a r all over m should be an integer. So now we're just going to group things. So we're going to get a naught, and we're going to group it as x to the r minus y to the r. And then we're going to get a sub 1, and we're going to group it as x to the r minus 1 uh, minus y to the r minus 1. And we're going to go so on, and it's going to go all the way to a sub r minus 1, x to the r, x to the 1 minus y to the 1. So x minus y. And that has to be divisible by m. And that just means that m has to divide all x to the k minus y to the k, where k goes from 1 all the way to r, right? Because it has to divide each of these terms. So it has to divide this term, this term, this term, all of them in between. And those terms all share some x to the k minus y to the k, and the k's change. But if we can prove that it just divides in general, m divides that one, then we can prove it's true. And m uh, does, in fact, divide that one, because we know that from the initial statement, x minus y over m is an integer. So if we know that x minus y over m is an integer, so m divides x minus y, and we also know that uh, we know that x minus y divides x to the k minus y to the k. Going back to your algebra two class, the polynomial division stuff. Uh, so we know that if m divides this, so we know that x minus y over m is an integer, and we know that x to the k minus y to the k for any k over x minus y is an integer. Then all we ha simply have to do is just multiply these two, and we get xk minus y to the k over m 
in multiplying two integers, so an element of integers. So m divides all x to the k minus y to the k, so that means m divides every single one of these, which means when we add all of these up, it's just, and we divide all that and we divide by m, it's going to be an integer. So, proven.